Hi guys, how are you doing? Today we're gonna analyze a game from Emmanuel Lasker against William Steinitz. They were the first and the second world champions, so I guess that we're gonna learn a lot from them. And in this game we're going to see a, a peace sacrifice that Emmanuel Lasker made. And I think that we can learn many things from, from this sacrifice. So let's let's get to the point. In the diagram we have a position in which we can see that White's opening didn't go very well in the sense that he's basically down two pawns. So his position, let's say, is a bit compromised. So what uh, Lasker is looking for is just a direct attack on Black's king. So now it's actually Black to play. And I would like to ask you to pause the video for a few seconds and just try to find the best move or which move you would play as black here. Currently the f7 pawn is under attack. So basically black has to do something about it. So just pause the video for a few seconds and tell me what you play here. So here Steinitz played the move knight to h8 which seems like an interesting, uh, like a good defensive move probably if you see the follow-up that he, he had which is to push the, the pawn the pawns to c6 and d5 and kick away the bishop from the diagonal so all in all it looks like an interesting plan but we will see the amazing resource that uh, Emmanuel Lasker finds before we, we get to the game, we will see some alternatives. So the, there's the more active move, which is knight to e5, to defend and attack the bishop. But on the other hand, this will simply blunder uh, the rook. So this is a no-go. So. And there is another alternative, which I think is even more natural. And um, it wasn't played. So uh, um, th th it is a bit difficult to say why it was not played, because it is really natural actually. It, it also follows the, the principle of the least active piece, which is to just activate the, the worst piece that you have, which in this case is White's rook in the corner. So um, here uh, Black could have played rook to f8, which basically defends the f7 pawn and still keeps the knight on, on a better square. So if, if white followed in, in the same way, h4, basically white here ha has to attack, he's down to pawns, so he has to find some some counterplay, otherwise in, in an ending or even in the middle again, being two pawns down, the game will not last very long. So here white has, black had another active move, which is b5, so basically kicking away the bishop and if the bishop wanted to stay in the diagonal with bishop to b3, then black can start with the move rook to e2. And um, I think that basically black is better here. The knight can eventually jump to, to e5. Um, even if, let's say, um, white plays queen to d3, then an idea is to just exchange queens. So then, then we can say that... Uh, Black here is better, and the game would have been completely different. So, so here followed the move knight to h8. So again, uh, white has to follow up with active, active, and even desperate moves. So um, Steinitz continued the c6, and here again Lasker has to hurry up. Played g6. Very interesting move, because again, if he plays, I mean something like h5, I think it's a bit too slow. Even here, d d5 is strong. Even maybe even taken on g5 might be a move. So okay, so um, white played g6, and then um, we actually we can say that um, white already has some form of counterplay. So um, here Stein is continuing with d5. There was another alternative, which is to take on h6 and play h5. Objectively, 
black can still be better here but um, white is getting active on the edge file so basically um, white is attacking first so with accurate defense black might defend and win the game but still playing rook f8 in the critical position that we analyzed was was a much better version to to defend so here Stein is played d5 which is still a logical move um, white took on h7 black took so then follow bishop to the three check king to g8 h5 rook e8 now black is finally activating his, his rook and here um, again Lasker has to be active so h6 may, makes a lot of sense um, here um, black tried to keep the position closed which made, made sense so that's a um, logical move but here we, ge we get after h7 king g7 we get this I think quite an interesting position where the knight on on the corner is basically basically has no no squares because it it could jump to f7 or g6 but since he has two pawns basically he has a knight that has no no square no active squares at all so this i think is quite a an interesting position to see so Addition, uh, additionally black's king is much weaker than white's i mean black the main thing that he has here is the e file but basically it is being controlled so i am not sure how strong this control of the e file what what the importance is so we have this position where basically black is two full pawns ahead but even uh, lasker here manages to play a very quiet move like king to b1 which i think is illustrates that his position is not not so bad so basically he managed to complicate the position and even he's probably even uh, probably not even worse here so so let's continue let's go ahead with the game again a3 another very quiet move which i liked it so c5 played by the steinitz which is again wanted to kick away the bishop so here um lasker is already preparing this uh, peace sacrifice with the move to queen to f2 but even here um just to highlight the the bad bad position of black skin even here he had this nice move bishop to e2 so he was even not forced to sacrifice the the bishop the point being that the bishop cannot be taken since queen to h6 is checkmate so after queen to f2 um black followed with c4 and here um lasker played queen to h6 threatening checkmate so um black has to do something about it queen to, queen to h6 is checkmate so here um black played f6 and here followed this um i, I think very nice piece sacrifice just even this bishop for for one pawn op bishop to f5 open lines against the black king so um black decided not to take the the bishop straight away he will have to take it sooner or later because white will follow up with uh, rook to g1 put pressure on, on g6 but uh, black decided to delay the this uh, taking of the bishop just to give another alternative line so even after g takes a uh, rook to g1 if he plays knight to f6 and knight to g6 then he, uh, this just basically loses after rook g6 king takes rook g1 king f7 queen h5 king e7 protecting the rook on e8 and then here uh, the simple queen takes and queening basically white gets the piece back and still gets the the attack so black decided to play king to f7 um lasker 
played rook to g1 increasing the, pr the pressure on g6 so basically sooner or later black will have to take the piece and after taking the, the piece queen h5 king e7 protecting the, the rook on e8 um, here he followed with, with yeah with the aggressive rook to g8 but even here just to give uh, to discuss about this position even here the quiet rook takes a five was possible and uh, as we can see later in the game still being a piece down but having you know the better king even uh, the, the pawn h7 which is strong is basically controlling this knight uh, which still is very passive still so far has the square to, to jump but I now is controlling the pawn so um, white has full compensation and more importantly it's easier to play uh, for white here so so after rook to g8 um, king d6 rook takes a5 queen e6 um, takes on e8 rook takes king c5 defending the d5 pawn queen h6 um, black followed with the move rook e7 so the position is so uh, again uh, I really like this position where black is a full piece up but basically uh, white can still play, play quiet moves so um, black continued with rook e7 and here um, white has a, a strong move a stronger move the move that he played which is queen to h2 is strong but even here he had a, a winning move which was queen to d2 basically i in the, the b4 square just trying to, to bring the king further and um, a sample line here would go queen to b5 and after queen f2 which forces d4 queen f5 rook e5 is just checkmate in any case after queen h2 white still has the the better position so here um, and also quite importantly it is very hard to defend this position for for black here um, Stein is plays queen to d7 which is a losing move he could have tried to to keep the game moving uh, going with rook to e6 and um, well here white has alternatives queen to g1 is, is strong queen to f2 here maybe black can hold the position but again he has to find very accurate moves like after queen b5 rook to f8 rook to e2 and after a move like queen f6 for example here he might have queen e5 again he's really struggling to to keep the game going so just for for instance if queen to d8 here he might have this nice defensive uh, rook sack in which after uh, king takes d2 uh, would lead to a perpetual so this is probably the best black can hope for here so but in any case here he played queen d7 and it's really it's really hard to blame Steinitz because this is a position where, where you know playing with the king on c5 and white having a strong passed pawn and uh, a queen and rook attacking your king so it's really hard so here he has here uh, Lasker managed to find the, the best moves so after queen to g1 uh, he basically wins material by force d4 if he goes um, queen b5 would basically look, lead to checkmate after queen b6 and queen b4 so here after d, uh, d4 here he uses a similar idea that we, we saw in our previous line queen to g5 queen to d5 and here the very simple rook f5 will basically start collecting um, black species after queen to f5 king c6 queen f6 will basically pick up the the knight and even the the h pawn will will move further so so i hope that you guys like the game 
so what we can see in this game is that um, a piece is even too little material when we're talking about uh, king safety so here the two main things about uh, uh, that justify this piece sacrifice is the opening the the king what I liked about this sacrifice is even in in the, in the long run so it's, it's, a, it's a big sacrifice for a long-term conversation so even there you, you might consider sacrificing a piece and also how uh, knights uh, w w you probably know this saying that knights on the on the rim are dim so here we can see that a, a knight on h8 is really passive and um, basically it has two squares to jump I and even here in the game these squares were at, at a point even controlled by, by his own pawns so we can see that um, the knights are probably not very good defenders on, on the edge we know that knights can be very good defenders on, on squares like f8 or f1 but on the rim are really, really bad uh, defenders. So that's it for today, guys. I hope I hope you all the best in your games, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.